Hey, what's going on, Scatterbrains? Thank you for coming back to another episode of Scatterbrains. See, my name is Travis, and today I'm going to be doing a review for Married at First Sight, Season 9, Episode 4. So, yes, this review is late. No, I did not do a review for Episode 3 because I did not see Episode 3. The week that Episode 3 came on, I was very confused about the days of the week because I've been focused on getting this book finished, and it is finished. It'll be out August 9th, and I'll talk to you about that later. The week that it came on was also the week of the Democratic debates. So in my mind, I thought the, the debates were coming on Wednesday and Thursday, but apparently they were coming on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I wasn't, my Wednesday day was off. And by the time I realized it wasn't actually Wednesday, it was Thursday. <clears throat> so when I went to go watch the episode on demand, it wasn't available. Then when I went to watch the episode on Lifetime on demand, it just buffered the whole time. The episode never started. So I had nowhere to watch episode three. I looked for it online. I could not find it online anywhere. And like I said, the Lifetime app just was acting stupid. So I don't know what happened on episode three. I have not seen it. Y'all can let me know down in the comments, but I'm not going to be doing a review on it at this point. So we're just going to go ahead and skip ahead to episode four. So they're clearly yeah, on their honeymoon at the Pineapple Beach Club in Antigua. So we're just going to go, you know, each couple at a time as normal. So let's start off with Kyrus. Uh, she talks to him about why did he choose the route of Married at First Sight. And I'm starting to think that the producers of this show really did listen to us because even in this episode, I don't think I heard anybody say, I got Married at First Sight because. So I think they finally have listened to us to have them stop telling us every episode. So they got Iris to ask him so she could do their dirty work. So she asked him why he chose the route of Married at First Sight. And um, he gives his reasoning, which would, which would have been the same reasoning for if he would have said it himself, you know, the way he was doing it wasn't working. So she also asked him about longevity. Like, is this something that he believes will last a lifetime or is this just like a, a now thing which is a valid question but I would hope that the experts would not put somebody into this situation who did not have long-term goals for this but his goals are long-term something else they talked about was their pet peeves so her pet peeve was the amount of time that he spends on the phone she says that she's more so the kind of person who will use the phone like small increments throughout the day whereas he gets on and he's on it for I guess a long period of time so that's one of her pet peeves. And for him, his pet peeve is he's not a morning person. And Iris, you know, pretty much seems to be the kind of person who wakes up and she's just on. So, you know, th their pet peeves aren't anything at this point that are going to be major issues uh, for the marriage. They go on an excursion uh, and they go to swim with stingrays. I just really don't understand the purpose of swimming with stingrays. You know, I feel like they live in the ocean. I live on land for a reason and I don't really feel the need to want to go swim with them. You know, rest in peace to Steve Irwin, but that's what they decided to go do. And um, <clears throat> they later have a dinner on the beach. And he asked a question about the forks, like as far as table etiquette, what the forks are, you know, like salad fork, dinner fork. And she's able to uh, articulate what the forks are for. And he's happy about that. And she lets us know that she is classy ratchet. And she says she will get with you. She did something like that. And I was just like, no, no, girl, we don't believe you. We don't believe the story you're trying to sell us. I don't, Iris does not strike me as the kind of person who could get ratchet. She just doesn't. Um, she says, I can get with it if I need to, if I need, if it need be. That's what she said. So one thing we do learn about Iris is regarding her virginity, that she may not be as innocent as we thought. Uh, I don't remember what question he asked, but we pretty much find out that she's done other things. She just hasn't had Gina intercourse. So I'm like, oh, well then you shouldn't have been trying to find a pristine white dress. You know, a pristine white is you haven't done anything. Your your slate is blank. Your slate ain't blank if you just, if you've been doing other stuff, it ain't too many other things you can do. And I wanna know what the other things are. I know he probably didn't ask her out of respect for her and, and then not being on camera. Cause I think had he asked her on camera and she answered, we would have saw it. But I wanna know what the other things are. I wanna know how far from pristine white you are. Like, are you are you eggshell? You know, I, I, I wanna know how far from, from it are you, you know? But, so she's not pristine no more. She's, I ain't gonna say she's tainted, but she's tainted, okay? All right, moving on to Jezebeth. Jezebeth has gotten a visit from Aunt Flo, um, and I know the feeling. I know the feeling because on our wedding day, Aunt Flo showed up to Carmen's doorstep like, hey girl, what you doing? 
So I know exactly uh, how that feels to be on your honeymoon and you can't do anything. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so she got her Aunt Flo thing. The couples meet up because obviously they're all there at the same time. They meet up for a volleyball tournament, which is fun enough. Did I write about that later on? I might not because not much of anything happened. My iPad is acting so stupid. And then the girls and the guys, they split up and, oh yeah, I'll talk about it later. So they split up, so we'll get back to that later. After volleyball, though, uh, it seemed like everybody met up except for Jezebeth. Like everybody met up with their spouse to go eat. But that didn't happen with them. So Jezebeth was waiting. I mean, Elizabeth was waiting for like two hours and then she ended up eating lunch by herself. And, you know, that kind of caused like an, a minor issue. He said he didn't know where she was and she kind of felt like, why didn't you come looking for me? But they ended up talking it through, had a clear understanding. And, you know, they, they were able to communicate, which is what's key. So that was good. They were able to get through that and not let it and not let it like really affect the rest of the honeymoon. Through... Um, during dinner, they talk about not believing that you shouldn't keep score, believing that you shouldn't keep score, which I totally agree. You know, it's not supposed to be a kid, a tit for tat. And one interesting thing for them was that they had the kids talk and they both were on the same page as far as not really wanting children. But they both told the experts that they wanted children. So they maybe might, you know, I think he said he would revisit it in a few years. But for me, it's like so both of y'all lied to the experts. So that to me then changes the whole process because now you have it where people are admitting to telling the ex experts the things that they think the experts want to hear in an effort to get matched. So to me, it's like, maybe that's why y'all marriages ain't been working out is because y'all have been allowing these contestants to lie to y'all just to get on the show. That might be something that they need to look further into when it comes to whatever the next city is. Well, they're probably in production for the next city, so the city after the next one. So, um... <clears throat> During the talk with the wives and the husbands, not much happened, but oh, well, no, one more thing happened with Jezebeth. They took a, a romantic bath together. Uh, he ran the bath for her and they got in and I was really uncomfortable watching them. I was really uncomfortable watching them take a bath because it looked real moist in the bathroom. And I wrote down that it looked like it smelled like PetSmart. So it looked like it smelled like PetSmart in the bathroom with them. It was just uncomfortable. You know, I don't feel like we needed to see it. It just looked, ugh, where's the air freshener? All right, so the wives and the husbands, their individual conversations weren't much of anything. Something to note was that uh, Je Jezebeth apparently gonna get lip tattoos, lips tattoos, and she's gonna get hers on her butt. And the husbands talk about their experiences so far, and we mostly focused on the fact that Keith is married to a virgin. Jamie says that that's exciting. And uh, moving on to DeGory. So I guess Greg is the kind of person to give his woman a uh, hundred compliments a day, and she feels like it's too much, and she wants him to limit them for this first week. And I kind of was like, I, I've never known a girl to be like, you're complimenting me too much. I mean, I guess if you ain't been de dealing with nobody for 10 years, it might be too much. But that's not his fault. That's your fault for not being with nobody for 10 years. So he says he's going to try to um, limit that. They talk about if they have any concerns. And obviously the concern that he has is 10 years. And um she says that that concern is valid, but she'll do her best to make sure that she doesn't clam up because of the fact that she hasn't been in a relationship. I just, I don't, I don't understand how, how you could not have been in a relationship for 10 years, be 30 and go on married at first sight and expect to have a successful marriage. Because for me, the, my twenties were very much so a learning opportunity when it came to dating and relationships and really learning what I liked and what I didn't like. So I think to just not have that at all, it, something about that 10 years just doesn't make sense to me when it comes to Deanna. Just something about it doesn't make sense because, okay, you haven't been in a relationship for 10 years, but you had to at least been dating or long-term dating somebody. But if she hadn't even been doing that, like you're not ready for marriage, boo. But uh, their exciting thing that they go do is they go zip lining, but he's afraid of heights. And um, he, he tried to chicken out, but he ended up doing it. So that was cool. I thought it was jacked up that the little 
not the little, but the woman who was helping, who worked with the zip lining thing, he said he was scared and thinking about backing out. She was like, oh, it's just 300 feet down. Like, how are you gonna say that to somebody who's scared? That doesn't make sense to me. But later on, they end up sipping champagne on the beach. <clears throat> And uh, he believes that she has walls up, but he's going to be breaking them down. And I'm like, you got 10 years of walls to break down, bro. 10 years of walls. Because, I mean, it, something had to have happened to cause her to not be in a relationship for 10 years. Because if you ain't been in a relationship for 10 years, that ain't got nothing to do with, but, with anybody but you. That is your fault. It is something to do with you that you're not in that relationship. But And um, all I have down for member is that they consummated their marriage and it happened naturally and that's not a surprise for any of us we knew that that was going to happen because of how much chemistry they had in episode two and um they work out later which isn't you know it was not much of anything to that so that's pretty much all that happened in episode four um like i said y'all let me know down in the comments what happened in episode three and if i really missed anything or anything you know noteworthy uh let me know what y'all thought i am still enjoying these four couples i'm ready to see a little bit more drama you know you know let's get some stuff once we get from the honeymoon i guess you know then things will start really picking up but for now everything's still cool but i'm interested to see where things go this season I'm still entertained i'm still gonna keep up with the reviews you know now that i have the book done so y'all tell me what y'all thought remember to share like comment subscribe if you have not already and i'll be talking to y'all later peace